Greetings and welcome to Outlaw Gamer Radio, the official podcast of OutlawGamers.com. This is the show where we live to play and play to live. I'm Brent Adams, joined by a man who believes the Splatoon voice chat paradox may be the phenomenon that finally destroys the space-time continuum. Mr. Tony Grice. Tony, what's going on? I, I feel like I should have my lawyers uh, talk to you about the format of this uh, podcast because it, it feels <laughs> remarkably feels dangerously similar close to something to another show. <laughs> and of course, since it is very similar to another show, that means we are also joined by a man <gasps> who always introduces his hair first because it arrives three to six minutes before the rest of him. <laughs> Mr. Daniel Kaiser, Daniel. What is up? So good to be on with both of you guys. And hold on. Yes, I am actually speaking to the lawyer right now. This is completely. Okay, good. <laughs> this good. is horse shit. Sort of- What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's up, guys? Good to talk to you, especially around uh, our gamer holiday of E3. So uh, this is great. This is good, good times. On. I'm so happy to be on with both of you once again. I'm sure that there are many in the audience who are running to grab their friends, their dogs, and uh, and the women that they the women that they have chained up in their closets to say listen to this this is you guys used to do this other show <laughs> so uh, welcome guys it's great to uh, it's great to have you all yeah and man it's awesome to be uh, to be back yeah thanks for having us on you are you yeah. are more than welcome and you guys are always welcome you know that we love you the outlaws love you um, the Beatles love you. What about Lauren? He he doesn't. Does he still? He, love us? Lauren hates yeah, you guys. Like he was supposed to be on this show, and then when he heard we were coming on, he's like, "Fuck those That's guys." That's exactly right. That is exactly what happened. Lauren, as you may or may not be aware, is currently in Brazil, and he is uh, he is helping to uh, get his wife, who who had to remain behind there for a few months after he moved back to the states. He's been uh, he's been in the, he's been stateside for a little while. He's going back to collect her, their dog, and. The rest of their life, and then uh, I don't know the way you put all that. You know? It sounds like she's like being detained or something. I don't know that <laughs> to collect like she did something illegal, and, and he's having to recover her, or, you know, or something. That, that's, no, that no, awful. no, not at all. Although, while you have the lawyer on the phone, you might want to ask him about anyway. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, so Lauren's out for a couple of weeks taking care of that, and um, so thanks very much for filling in for him. I'm sure uh, that I'm sure that he thinks that it takes two of you. To replace to make up. one of him. I, I, I think he's probably right, honestly. <laughs> I mean, like, when we go to L.A. and we want to eat somewhere, we, yeah. you know, we can't get a that's, table. That's true, but Lauren, yeah, that's, that's all Lauren can get I'm a table. So, you know. Lauren can get a table. So, let's, uh, <laughs> speaking of L.A., L.A. is where E3 is going down, and E3 is what we're going to be oh, talking that about. Nice, that, was, that was a nice transition. In man. the next section, <laughs> but in this section, we're going to be talking about some other stuff. Uh, some trailers, some news, <laughs> and some other interesting factoids. Let's get started with Until Dawn, which we now have a launch date trailer for. It's coming out August 25th. Uh, this is the PS4 exclusive that recreates my favorite genre of film ever. Uh, which is the teen slasher flick, into a, a video game that is purported to have, I don't know, squillions of different endings based on the choices <laughs> you make as a player. And people will live or die based on your player choices. I am interested in the game not because I like the teen slasher genre, which I loathe, but <laughs> I am fascinated by the storytelling possibilities uh, of what's being proposed here. I, I really am, am very, very interested to see just how effective the, the tech that is going into this game is, and that's why this one is on my watch list. I'm curious to know, what do you guys think? Is there any interest whatsoever mm. in this game for you? Daniel, I hear you. Mm. <laughs> what do you think? I, I, you know me. You guys know me. Well, who are you? You know that I am... I am a optimistic glass half full. You, I mean, yeah. for me to speak negative about something, it's really got to be something that just. Oh, are you going to go off? Uh, Hang on, let me get my pants off. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't get this whole thing. I just don't get it. I mean, it. I mean, I need someone to tell me what I'm missing. A, well, just let's talk about this this announcement trailer. Okay, go ahead. the the trailer looks again. Like a movie. If yep. if I want to watch a movie, I'm going to watch a movie. The gameplay-wise, I still don't get 
okay, this whole thing about choice, 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 that's fine. People will live, people will die, but it's, it's basically it. Unless I'm missing something, it's coming across as just a choose your own adventure type of thing with like with like quick time events that I don't see how it's compelling as a game other than you're in you're basically in a horror movie and and that's fine. I, but then the game's coming out in August too. Like why isn't this coming out next to Halloween? Mm, good or they, point. I mean, good like, point. It, it, well, because I Rocktober, mean, everything about how are they going to hang in Rocktober? I mean, I mean, aren't yeah. they being kind of honest about their chances? Well, yeah, I mean, yes, I guess. But again, framing wise, there, there's just so much about this project to me that I just don't get. I'm not saying that it's bad. I don't get yeah, it. I, you know, I know what you mean. It's got beautiful graphics. The characters seem, you know, pretty well acted and well voiced. But again, you know, this just it, it looks like and this is pretty bad. But I mean, it looks like even a lighter version of something like heavy rain in terms of gameplay you know it's it's like what do you actually do just click a button every once in a while and 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 then again like i said this is the type i said this before when we last talked this looks good in a trailer or when you show it right. to, particularly to like non-gamers but once you go through oh man i i hit under the bed three times in a row and i keep dying like all right how do i get past this part okay oh i gotta hide in the closet okay so i'm gonna go i'm gonna hide in the closet oh, okay now dead, now i gotta again. use the pipe okay now, so then you're just like now it's just stringing things together like i don't i don't understand maybe i'm missing something i'm open to that but from I, what i see thus far i'm not interested tony don't don't you think uh, a, a little bit of a twos? I, I just don't think it's the type of genre you you would typically be interested in either. Maybe mm-hmm. or am I wrong there? Oh, I don't like horror stuff. Though, yeah, because so, yeah, like is. I think if it was like say say it was a more um, say something like Heavy Rain, where it's maybe a little more of a serious in tone as opposed to kind of like hacker slasher teen you know teen uh, uh, horror movie kind of thing. Uh, I think the whole idea is, you know, the way you describe the gameplay probably is pretty, pretty accurate. But I do think that that is the fun of it. If you want to watch a movie, you can watch a movie, but you can't change what happens in a movie. And so this yeah. is like you get to play through it and you get to see like, you know, ah, oh, that was stupid. Why did they do that? You know, the whole like, you know, watch out. He's behind the door kind of, you know, thing that you scream out. And this is the kind of chance you have of playing that, getting scared, then playing again, doing something different, getting a little bit further, getting scared again. I kind of think this is like you have like the games like what is it like uh, Five Nights at Freddy's and mm. um it seems like there's some games now that are that kind of like they're there to give you those those frights, those scares like you get in these sort of, you know, teen, you know, cheap horror, you know, kind of movies where it's all about like, you know, it, it's it's not really meant to be like sometimes psychologically really deep and interesting. It's meant to just scare you, to get you to jump off your couch. It's just visceral. And Exactly, and I think that's the kind of game this is, and it's just that it does, one, I, I think it does, it looks really good, uh, I mean, in terms of visuals, I think if they have as many possibilities as, you know, it sort of sounds like they're going for, I mean, it sounds like you could play this quite a few times and continually see new things or go down different paths. Um, and I think, I mean, let's be honest, how is that any different from any video game we play? Uh, you know, if anything, it sounds like it has more endings you can get to than some games where you play through multiple times really only to get the same thing. In those games, maybe the gameplay itself is more fun, what, but you're still trying to get through a story. So I, I don't what know. What do you I'm, have to do to get the happy ending? Let's be honest. If you want the happy ending, you just have to, you know, roll over at the right time and offer forty dollars. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, it's unspoken. So, you know, I, I think the the last thing I'll say on it, and j- just to kind of answer your question, DK, I think that my interest in this game is hoping it is more than just a choose your own adventure. I'm hoping that there is something really interesting going on with the the technology powering this, and that and that it is more than just. You know, a bunch of branching storylines that, that lead to different things, but that it, it forms a cohesive story that that actually makes sense through all these different permutations. And depending on which characters, you know, drop uh, and, and which characters survive, uh, you know, through the story, it changes like the, the, the your point of view on the story. So like, you know, the drama and things like that. Uh, it, it changes depending on you know what characters you're kind of focused on, which characters survive, and all that. I, I'm just I'm really really curious to see if they're able to do anything different with it. With it, that is my specific interest. Is is my optimism that perhaps it is more than just a, a kind of pick your own adventure video game? 
But we'll I see. Let's hope so. I think you're setting yourself up to be the most disappointed of well, the Well, I mean, three. I'm not buying this motherfucker. I mean, <laughs> I'm not losing money on it, but I'm just going to wait and see. I'm just going to watch a Let's Play and see what happens. There you go. All right. Uh, moving on. A game that I am going to be playing is Batman Arkham Knight. In just a few weeks, actually, coming up uh, June 23rd, we're going to be checking this thing out. Uh, but we've got a new video today. Uh, with one of the uh, one of the development team talking about some of the side quest details uh, that are going to be going on in Arkham Knight, and it sounds as though they are really they're really making a, a big deal about side quest stuff. Of course, I think one of the biggest things they emphasize, which is a fan favorite, is uh, Riddler and uh, the Riddler trophies, the Riddler challenge maps have been uh, big big parts of the other games and have been some of the more enjoyable content in terms of gameplay. Uh, I, I think that. Uh, that is a really good thing for the team to focus on, and I'm very anxious to see what they've done. They talk a bit about how the Riddler, being the, the clever guy that he is, he's really focused on the Batmobile. You know, the, the Batmobile is a big, big chunk of gameplay here. Batman and the Batmobile working together. That's going to be, I think, the core dynamic of Arkham Knight gameplay, and the Riddler is specifically out to, he's out to take out the Batmobile. He's studying what uh, what Batman's strategy and arsenal is like, and then he's formulating new strategies to counter that. And so uh, they talk about a, a a Riddler, like a Riddler racetrack that's, I guess, you know, basically designed to kind of test the Batmobile's limits and then figure out a way to beat it to shit later on. So anyway, the point is that if you were worried that you were going to have to get out of the Batmobile to take on the Riddler, let your worries be assuaged now. <laughs> uh, but anyway, there, of course, there's also the United Rogues Gallery, which is uh, a pretty interesting feature. I'm excited about Batman Knight, after, uh, Arkham Knight, after all this time. It's finally here, in theory. Uh, so I'm, I'm allowing myself now to get pretty excited about this. Tony... Where, it's, where it's are you close at enough. I, I don't think you you have to worry too much about another uh, uh, pushback of the uh, release date or anything. Yes, so. I'm banking you're right at this point. Yeah, I um, I, you know, I, I've never never really been a huge fan of the you know Arkham series. Not like that. I thought it was bad. Just for whatever reason, I, I, I guess in a way, I'm not a huge Batman fan. Like just the character. I mean, yeah. like I like him. I like him. in, you know, Brent, you and I have talked about uh, the Justice League cartoons, things like that. But I'll right. be honest, I, I actually like him more as part of a team than I like him just alone. Okay. Um, and you know, even some some more recent things like the the Gotham TV series stuff. I like it. You know, but it really it's it's not even doesn't have much to do with Batman yet. You know, so. Fair enough. There, there are aspects of Batman, Batman's world that I like. The Arkham games, even though I, I think you know technically they look they look great, they they you know uh, play really well. Just just haven't really grabbed me. And I don't know what it is. This one actually seems to be the furthest. Like it's, I don't know. Like some I read a review the other day of somebody that played like a demo of it just a few days ago, and they they likened it to you're playing in the world of like. Batman and Robin, the, the movie, <laughs> like this this neon this neon colored bright, you know, like this I mean, still sh- a night nightmare. But I'll be honest, it, when I, when you watch the videos, it sort of it sort of feels that way, just to a slight degree. Yeah. And you know, it's just sort of this open worldness with the Batmobile and stuff. Like I, when you read about it, you know, when when you first read about it, it, it sounds interesting. It sounds cool. When I sort of see it, it kind of looks. I don't know. It just it doesn't look all that uh, exciting to me. And uh, just watching some of the stuff for you know the the added content. I mean, it 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 looks like kind of more more of the same. So I mean, it, to me, it's it's if you like this series, if you love this series, I I can't see how you're not going to love this one even more. It just looks like more of what you've what you've had to this point. So kudos to them because they're giving the, what their audience wants, I, and I I don't fault them at at all. Can't can't get quite all that excited about it myself personally dk where are you at well arkham actually is the subject of the latest issue of retro video game magazine we're looking at the history of the franchise and and spoke with uh dax dex Jin, who's in the video that you referenced yeah. uh he he did an interview with us about uh about this game and, and the evolution of the franchise and i you know i've been very focused on the impact of the arkham franchise over the last month or so putting together this publication but that it, that impact is significant what what they've been able to do for superhero games and the perception of them is very significant uh in that the bar has been raised and you know i totally get what you're saying as well tony about maybe a s- certain aspects not resonating with you or just not being huge fan of the, of the you know uh, of this that or the other thing regarding batman but as a game though it it is it's a very compelling game and this it, this um 
a very compelling series in general, but this installment is, is they've gone above and beyond from everything that I know about this, uh, to jam pack it full of stuff. I don't know how it's going to conclude. Um, it's very interesting that they have been able to, um, you know, develop a unique character, uh, for this game in Arkham Knight, uh, that's specific to, you know, the Batman lore that this is, here's a new character coming in via this game, which is really interesting. Uh, but, the, the game, I think, looks, looks like you said, a larger, more compelling, deeper version of what was previously there. If, you, if you've if you not liked the previous games, you're, there's probably, you know, I don't know that you'll just automatically love this one, aside from the fact that maybe it's on a next-gen system and, uh, you know, looks pretty badass. But if you are remotely a fan of either those games or Batman, this is probably going to be a Game of the Year candidate for you uh, because it it's it's that rich. The gameplay is, is that rewarding uh, from what I I've seen him played and uh i definitely think it's it's a it's a big deal that this game is coming out you know especially right before comic con and uh around e3 and all this stuff so um i think this is going to be one of the most talked about releases of the year and will certainly certainly be mentioned amongst game of the year candidates i don't i don't know that it'll win it but um i think it'll be up there another game that is almost certain to be mentioned in game of the year candidates is the witcher 3 and if you haven't heard enough about The Witcher 3 on recent episodes of this show, rest assured that CD Projekt is going to be talking lots about The Witcher 3 over the next couple of years because they sure as fuck aren't talking about Cyberpunk 2077, as they have recently <laughs> let us know. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077, of course, is still coming, a, a very uh, highly anticipated game, I would imagine, but they're not talking about it until at least 2017, they've said. Uh, they say that they're working on the game, and that they're anxious to to show it off and all that stuff. But right now is the time of The Witcher 3, and they'll talk about Cyberpunk down the road. This I, I have in the document today because I think it's really interesting in light of some of the conversations we used to have on Battlecry about overhyping a game, about saying too much too soon, about trying to put out media all through the development process to keep you excited for the game as opposed to just salivating waiting board, yeah. until you actually have something and then saying it. I wanted to I wanted to kind of ask you guys opinion on this. Do you think do you think that this mm-hmm. is this is a smart move? Do you think that they're kind of taking the advice that we were always freely giving about uh, about you know holding your cards until a little bit later in the game? Yeah, I mean <laughs> I I I, def- I definitely do and I I also think that I'm really happy for these guys um, because, you know, they've come from humble beginnings and now The Witcher 3 has been the game. People are, as they mentioned in the article, it's like, you know, they've arrived officially with this game being on the level that it is, generating as much conversation as it has, um, being something, you know, the game was delayed. They really wanted to get this one right. For if you, the you know, rave reviews for this um you know, for this title. And, and this is their time to kind of bask in that, let the Witcher stand and let the Witcher be its thing, uh, for a while. And they, they have earned the ability to kind of hold their cards close to their vest and just be able to do what they want with cyberpunk and more power to them because they're, they're going to deliver a a really good game. I I feel like because they, they are a studio who's very, very focused on giving fans what they want. Um, And now that they've achieved, you know, some people achieve uh, that quality level, but they don't necessarily use it properly. And I think if any company has proven that they are for their fans and for their community and, and delivering what their fans crave, it's been them in recent memory. And I think that they will, um, be trustworthy of, of the opportunity they've earned to do something great with cyberpunk. So I don't care. Why would we need to hear about it until they're ready to show it? I mean, it, it, you know how these things go. I mean, we, we've talked in, in EBC about delays for Arkham Knight and delays for uh, Witcher three. And, and now here we are talking about these games as they're out or getting ready to come out. And it really, it is what it is. So just hold, you know, talk about it when you're ready and show what you want and, and more power to them. Don't I, uh, I I I feel very much the same way. Although I do have a couple of points I, I do think are worth noting. Yes. The fact of the matter is, to some degree, 
it's still a long ways off, which still gives them plenty of time to talk about it early. You know, I mean, they um, like if if, if they're saying like right now it's too early to talk about it, but in say six months, they're already starting to talk about it. I mean, that's going to be still pretty early in the process. So they're they're saying 2017. They're saying that they're not saying peep until 2017. That well, and, or at and, least and that's I their intention. That. I mean, you know, of course it can change, yeah. but yeah, exactly. And, and that's I guess what I'm saying is like they say lots of things, you know, and and if they if they absolutely 100 percent abide by that, well then yeah, I think they are. And and the the whole uh, the whole idea though is that if they if they stay true to that, and I think they are the type of company that typically does, then then I I, I believe them. But there's a lot of companies that sort of say similar things like no 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 we want to focus on what we got now until the next thing comes out and then you know which is they, they still end up talking about yeah, it which is smart to do in some, this case i mean you know, certainly yeah. they don't need to be taking attention away from the witcher 3 right now exactly and what i was going to say that the other thing that i i i sort of see uh cd project a little bit in the vein of someone like rockstar for instance yeah. where i feel like they do a really good job of Focusing at least uh, externally, yeah, I'm sure internally they're focusing on more than one thing. But you know, externally they focus on one project. They really make it the the draw. They they get everybody's attention on it. And when even when it once it comes out, they focus on it for a while. Whereas it seems like a lot of companies, um, you know, it's like the second the thing drops, that's almost like you know, not long after that is when the press for it stops. Like it's just like okay. On to the next thing. We've been hyping this for the last year. Now it's out. We'll let it go for another month or so. Then we're on to the next thing. It's like the game releasing is like the end of them talking about it almost. Whereas like games like you know Grand Theft Auto Five or The Witcher Three, games like that, it's almost like we get a slower build up. But then once it drops, then it's like okay, now we're really putting our focus on. It. Now you can try our game. Now you can enjoy it. Hey, here's more content for it. Here's you know. Grand Theft Auto Online. Here is more, uh, you know, DLC that that genuinely enhances the game for The Witcher Three or whatever. Like it's like they don't let that be. They don't let the game coming out sort of be the end of the game in a sense uh, for them. You know, not for the, the 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 gamer. They sort of carry it on. Whereas I swear it does feel like a lot of games like. The second the game comes out, they're already starting to move towards the next thing. They're like, "Hey, buy this, buy this, buy this," you know, for a few, for a few, maybe a month or so, and then they're on to the next thing. Right. Um, whereas I think they kind of take take more time with it. So I, I definitely, I, you know, we met. I actually was lucky enough to meet them. You know, one of the E threes we went two years ago. Uh, the guys at CD Projekt, and they were super, super nice guys, super great guys, really passionate about what they did, and um, and it definitely shows. You know, I, and I think. For something the scale of of The Witcher Three, um, that is a little surprising to me. To be to be honest, I mean, you always have like one driving force, mm-hmm. you know, at the top of it. I think that's very passionate, but unfortunately, I think sometimes those that person is such a big picture kind of person that a lot of times I don't know how much of their hands they actually have on the game. Sometimes it's more them directing other people to kind of make the changes yeah. and uh the cd project guys it feels like they're uh, you know the whole team is really genuinely all uh you know 100 involved in their project so i don't know i uh, I, I think they're doing a good job and uh i hope we don't hear too much about uh cyberpunk until it's closer because i hate hearing about games years out you know before we see so them. i've heard so <laughs> lastly in the garage this week Speaking of seeing the future. Yeah, uh, the future is so bright, you got to wear VR goggles. And you're going to uh, be wearing the Oculus. <laughs> and buy a new computer. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so obviously, one of the biggest names in this field, probably, probably the name that really started the landslide interest in VR that we've seen in the last 18 months or so is Oculus. And the consumer Oculus Rift is, is finally on the table. We know that it's coming out. In the the first quarter of 2016, early 2016, they say, and uh, we also know about what it's going to cost in the sense that we know that if you don't have a PC and you want to get an Oculus Rift in a PC, that's going to basically cost you fifteen hundred dollars. If you go by Oculus specs, if you go by what they say you need in order to get into VR. So their CEO recently said to go all in. You got no PC. You want to get a PC and an Oculus. Fifteen hundred bucks is what you got to spend. So, given the and is that is that fifteen hundred now or fifteen hundred first quarter of twenty sixteen? Well, that, that's actually that yeah, that's a good question because it will change yeah. between now and then. But I think it's ballpark. I mean, yeah, it might be. I, I agree. I, I think I think fifteen hundred is probably a pretty good ballpark. Uh, so the, I guess here's the question: number one, by 
analyzing how much their sort of recommended PC build costs, you're looking at about 1200 bucks. So that means that the consumer version of the Oculus, Oculus Rift, probably around $300, which is not that huge a surprise. I think the, the dev kits were like 350 or something like that. So right. not a huge shock uh, on, on the Oculus Rift. But it does raise this interesting question of just how accessible this thing is going to be. Now, I just dropped some coin and upgraded my gaming PC. And I am, I'm coming in like right at kind of like the, the lower end of their recommended specs. My video card's pretty good, but my processor and RAM, yeah, maybe, you know, th- those are a little bit on the iffy side. So the point is that I might be able to get away without having to upgrade my PC. But if, you know, if, you, if you're DK as an example, you don't have a gaming PC, you're primarily a console guy, but you want to get in on VR... What do you do? I mean, do you, you buy think... Project Morpheus? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly what you do. So, right. what do you guys think? Do you guys think that uh, is it smart for Oculus to say this? I mean, I think they're being pretty. I think they're being pretty honest about what it's actually going to cost. Uh, but do you think that you know people seeing fifteen hundred dollars in the headlines for the Oculus Rift is going to do them any favors? Was this was this a smart strategy? Is the price right? What do you think, DK? Um, I think yes, it is because right now they're appealing to the hardcore market. They're not. Th- this whole thing hasn't reached critical mass. It's we're not talking about you know. It hasn't even reached people. mass. <laughs> it hasn't even reached mass, right? So, so right now, anything that comes out is for a very specific targeted audience. That audience feels good about themselves for either, like you said, for the reason you say. I mean, having all the the, the updates on their their uh, their current rig or thinking about how, what they're going to do. Maybe you'll update your process. This is the audience they're going for with this. And $300 uh, for the unit itself is about what those early adopters are going to pay uh, to be on the cutting edge of, of you know experiencing this type of technology. Over the course of time, obviously, all those costs are going to come down, not only the, the requirements for the uh, PC, but also the um, entry-level price of the Oculus and uh, other VR technologies. So, um, I think where where they're at is where they need to be. Um, you know, to me, it's uh, it's not something I would go out obviously and, and spend fifteen hundred dollars on to to experience. But uh, some people will, and um, I don't. I, I don't. I think that'll be a very low percentage. I don't think any. I don't think. Unless you're well to do, I don't think you're going to just start from scratch. You'd already have a, a PC if you were a fan. Right. You'd already have something resembling uh with the capability of upgrading it quickly um uh, you know unless you're just a dude who's just like hey i saw this thing on the news and i got money to blow i'm gonna go out and spend 1500 bucks for everyone else it's 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 within reach and uh so i think yeah they're they're where they 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 are where they need to be right now i uh i i definitely agree that it is i mean it's it's as good time as any to start preparing people for the amount of money they they might need to put into this to you know get ready it's it's like um if they didn't and they just drop that news once it comes out i think that might put off you know some people that were maybe on the more optimistic side of hoping it would be cheaper right. um i i think daniel's exactly right that that um uh, as sort of let's well let's be honest anytime a new game console comes out there are tons of people that are excited about it but there's also not all of those people that are excited about it buy it at launch. Right. A lot of people buy it six months later. Sure. A lot of buy, people buy it a year later. Usually people that are, you know, the, the, I think in the first two years is when you probably get your biggest numbers, you know, over that, that, that time period. Okay. So, I mean, the day that it launches, I do think that it will be uh, – it, it won't be just like this, you know, uncontrollable, you know, am, amount of them sold because I don't think that there will be – Quite as many people that are ready to jump in just yet. You know, well, it's not like an iPhone. How, you know, an iPhone's an expensive thing, but everyone needs a phone. And but it's also kind of a known phone. quantity too. It's like you yeah, know exactly. what you're getting. I mean, you're getting a better experience of something you have already experienced right. with right. Oculus Rift. I think for it, you know, I mean, there's obviously people that have used it before, but the great majority of people haven't yeah. and don't really know what to expect from it. And to be frank, I don't know if know what to expect from it. Like, I, I don't think a lot of people really, and, and myself included, to some degree really know what what 
what you can expect. We want well, exactly what to expect and what we even want from it. Like, is it something we are interested in? You know, every, you know, everybody just says like, oh, it's an awesome experience. Well, I mean, you know, everybody like, thinks great. This, meth is an awesome experience, love. but well, they also think like <laughs> this game is is great. You'll love it. Now, ah, okay, you know, I I don't. You know, I mean, everybody's you know perception things are totally different. Yeah. So the only thing that does well, and, and there's a fundamental thing about VR too, and that it's so subjective. You know, like I mean, everybody yeah. says like you really have to experience it they try to convey what the experience was like for them being overwhelmed and feeling really immersed and all that but it really yeah. is one of those things that it seems you need you need first you person experience on in order to truly yeah. get it yes i, 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 went, it's I experienced possible. the uh, at gdc and, and it blew my mind uh, i did not the oculus rift it was it was uh, methamphetamine um, yeah. No, I went into the Unreal booth and did, you know, saw what the guys at Epic were cooking up and they did this thing while well, the Lord of the Rings, I mean, Hobbit rather. And I mean, it blew my mind, but do I want, I, I came away like, do I want that? Like, I, I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I personally, and I, and we'll talk about this in the E3 section because I think it'll be a big focal point for Microsoft and, and Sony, but I don't know. I'm, I'm not sold on that. This is something that I actually want, although it's, it's pretty, pretty cool. And see, and, and you're a person that's experienced it and liked it, and you're still a little unsure. And so that's the thing. I think a lot of people just think, you know, it's just a given that everyone is going to love this. And and the thing is, I think that it will be become so ubiquitous that everyone will have access to mm-hmm. it. I don't necessarily know that it will be the single sole way people access everything, like, like some people kind of pitch right. it. Some people pitch it as, like, VR is the future of – Facebook of the internet of TV of gaming of you know and it's it's right. everything is just going to come to it and the fact of the matter is I think it will I think everything will come to it I don't know that that's how everyone will choose to view it you know it's like but I I think we'll get to a point where everybody has it you know you look at like the Google I O conference where they're doing like the the fucking just blows me away like the cardboard you know yeah. uh, I can't remember what they call it but it's the thing that they're basically and and I kind of almost think the idea is good they're like look this is a cheap way everyone already has a cell phone or you know most everybody already has a smartphone yeah. you you get this it fits in your phone and you can run a lot of those those apps at a, at a really low price like something like that to me is almost more exciting even than um something like oculus rift because i think that's something that like hey look i can try and kind of like and people can perfect and get the the ideas and the concepts working better before i drop money on the inaugural essentially you know like mass market inaugural edition of this hardware i'd really almost rather wait to try the revised vision a year later or you know the the perfected one whatever you want to say um the last thing i just was going to add is the fact that it does you know the because we start off talking about the specs and the price and all this sort of stuff the thing that i do find kind of interesting is the reason they sort of they you know he kind of comes out and says this and my first intuition is like well it's a pc the whole benefit of a pc is to improve the performance is to get more you know performance if you want to if you want to spend the money you can get it and they kind of say like well these specs should be good for kind of the life of the computer those those specs you know to buy that kind of hardware will get cheaper over time like naturally but essentially he's saying like look these specs are what we will have you know have developers making games towards Mm -hmm. which is so funny to me because it's like that's that's like the whole idea of a console. Like console, you, know, you make yeah. this hardware, it doesn't change, it makes it easier for developers, but yet we always hear that, you know, oh, well, it's going to be better on PC because you know, we have this ability to, to tweak it. And it, it kind of, I don't know, I just find it kind of funny that they're sort of kind of realizing, look, it's hard to get people to buy into this, so we have to kind of give them this guaranteed level that we work towards so that the experience will be consistent and we're not just, you know, oh, the game works great for your computer, but, you know, mine is... But it's shitty you know, for 92% cheaper, of all it doesn't, people on it, PC. Exactly, you know? exactly. So basically the, the point of all that is that Google is really excited about giving people the opportunity to get their face in some box. To sell you yeah. cardboard. That's what, <laughs> that's, that's what they're excited about. Hey, I came up with a way we can fucking sell cardboard. All right, guys. We are here in the clubhouse. Pull up a chair. Kick up your feet. That always makes me want a cracker. Right, you want a cracker? Just what? Be, well, being in the clubhouse. It makes me want a Your cracker. clubhouse was clearly different than mine. Um... <laughs> Grab a cracker if it suits your fancy, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about E3 as as we kind of said that we were going to earlier. We're going to talk about uh, some of the things we're excited about at E3. But before we get there, 
We're going to go to the poll results from last week's topic. We were talking about Arthur Geis's review of The Witcher 3 reaction to that claims that uh, it was toxic to the industry and so forth. We asked you guys to vote in that. DK, would you mind sharing those poll results with the outlaws? Speaking of crackers, uh, <laughs> there's been an accusation about, you know, Witcher 3 not being diverse enough and, and being sexist and all this type of stuff. And so anyway, the poll was this very basic question. Do you, all caps, think Polygon's review of The Witcher 3 is quote-unquote toxic and here are the results. 8% of the audience, which is a, a minority, so they won't be in The Witcher 3. <laughs> <laughs> this, these people say, no, Mr. Geis, uh, who is the reviewer, um, we believe it's pronounced Geis, we uh, and we're going to stick with that. Mm. Uh, is he, They say he's right to point out what he considers objectionable content. 8%. Okay. Moving up to the next result, 24% said that Geis has a potentially... Cont- uh, contentious opinion, but it isn't harming anyone. So he's entitled to it. He can do what he wants right. to do. So uh, the vast majority, though, 69 percent, 69 is the best number. They say, <laughs> yes, it's discouraging purchasing the game because of a subjective political view. So the outlaw nation has spoken there you have and it. they say, no, this is not spoken. Cool. A bunch that of women hating racist content. views is what it's spoken. Obviously. Sure. So that that just proves that th- this audience is racist and sexist. So congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and or what we would have deemed like a few years ago, normal. Oh. Normal. No, and, 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 and I agree with the 69% just for the record, because as we were talking about a little bit offline, these opinions are more reserved for a, a, an, a, an editorial as opposed to a review. And yeah. they're, they're perfectly fine opinions, but... You know, judging a game based on that is, um, as it's, 69% yeah. of the audience says, is, is, well, is and, not. And it's one thing to state what's in a game versus giving your opinion on what, what it should be in a game. You know what I mean? And that's, right. that's, that's what they did was editorialize it versus just saying, like, look, this is in the game. So, so you know it. This is how it's handled. Um, and hey, here's what it looks like. Here's what it sounds like. You know, moving on to the next parts right. of the game. So. In fairness yeah. to Polygon and Mr. Geis, I, I, you know, perhaps these things did not affect the review score all that much because they gave it an eight. And uh, and I, you know, perhaps that's consistent with how well the game is being reviewed at other outlets. So, you know, ultimately, maybe they didn't uh, they didn't weight it as heavily as far as the actual review score goes, but certainly as far as uh, as far as real estate on the page of what they talked about with the game, uh, they spent a fair amount of time on this. Yeah, and, and the score is not the review. The review he might have had know, a hard time with read. it. Oh god, people, he might have had a hard time, but uh, ultimately, comes. you know, he ate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Jeez. moving on. Um, enough. Enough <laughs> of The Witcher Three for now. I, I know that we've talked about it a lot, and the audience uh, has heard about it a lot. So uh, we're going to go ahead and move on. In the main topic this week, we're going to be talking about E3. It's right around the corner. It's coming up uh, very, very quickly. And there's some interesting things, some interesting firsts, some interesting changes in precedent that are going to be happening at this year's E3. And so we thought uh, this would be the perfect opportunity since the three of us are together again. Together again. It's so good to be together again. Uh, To talk about... That makes me want a cracker. It makes me want to watch uh, Muppet Steak Manhattan, <laughs> but uh, that's that's another story. Uh, makes, me, makes me want to log off. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about E3 2015 and what we're looking forward to. I, um, I'll go first. I'll go ahead and stipulate right at the beginning that the games that I'm going to mention here are things that... I don't feel that I've seen enough of right now that I'm waiting to get more info on. So there's certain things that are definitely going to be at E3, like Metal Gear Solid Five, The Phantom Pain, as an example, Mm -hmm. that I don't really need to be sold on. I'm interested in The Phantom Pain right now. I'm not really curious to get more of that game. I'm pretty much in at this point. So and let's be honest, Konami's probably going to cancel by the time (laughs) E3 rolls around at this point. At this point, or make it into a mobile game, or or they're going to assassinate Kojima, or both. Or they've already done uh, it. I mean, Kojima was, he was replaced by CG Kojima a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I just want to say if there's a game on the list that, uh, that is, you think is noticeably absent, that could very well be the reason. 
So first up for me, I'll talk about Uncharted 4. Uh, this obviously Uncharted series is one of the cornerstones of, uh, of, of my gaming career in recent memory. It's one of the cornerstones of Sony's console business. Uh, one of the most popular, if not the most popular console exclusive title that they got going for them. It's a big, big fucking deal is my point. And Uncharted 4, I think, is pretty hotly anticipated given the fact that it's going to be first Uncharted game on the PlayStation 4. And for all we know, maybe the last Uncharted game. Who knows? But anyway, I am very, very anxious to see more about Uncharted 4. I'm imagining Sony's going to be, be making a pretty big push with this. Uh, game's not coming out until, I guess, early 2016, they've said. So it's going to be a little ways off, but I, I think that Sony's still going to be plugging this button pretty hard at their E3 press conference. And, and I, for one, am all for it. I'm, I'm really anxious to uh, to get a little bit more Uncharted 4-ness. Uh, either of you guys, yes. are you guys with me on this? What do you think? Absolutely. Yeah. That's all I need. Uh, the game looked stunning. Um, and the franchise is just a blast. Uh, yeah, I, it, you just, you just, you know, you, you want to see this at E3, you want to see it get you excited for the game. I don't think we'll get a release date. We might get a release window, yeah. um, a more defined release window, and we might learn something about a particular mode or something with multiplayer or something like that. I don't know, but it really doesn't matter. All they need to do is show the game for like two minutes and then just drop the mic and walk off the stage. Yeah, like Jack Tritton uh, was totally. never able to bring himself to do. <laughs> Cor- he did on our show. Cor- oh, he, he tried. He, he, he dropped- tried to drop your mic. But he, he sort he kinda, of he kind of mic down. failed. I mean, if, if we're yeah. honest, he, well. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tony. Uh, no, I, I agree with DK. It's like it's this is a no brainer. It's not one of those that even really. I mean, I mean, it is. It's going to sell like hotcakes when it comes out. You know, we're going to see a bunch of it. You know, getting closer to the release window. Uh, people just want to see more of it. I actually think this is one of those games that's great to actually not show a ton of footage oh, from. Yeah. You know, it's right. like it's you know for, at this point in time. You know, it's it's this is a great one to show you like a you know whatever a, a minute minute. It, it, it exists with to reinforce bunch. your need for the PS4. That's it. it like yeah, right. and and that's to sort it. of. And to just carry you through until it's released, you know, it's, this is right. just enough news to kind of, you know, get your get your batteries charged back up to get you through till till it drops, you know. So yeah, no no question, looks looks amazing. DK, uh, you want to talk about uh, something from your list? Uh, the biggest thing on my list is uh, all things Bethesda, mm. and the, and I just I think I think they have the opportunity. They are they are well positioned. The time is right. This is going to be Bethesda's biggest E3 yet. It's going to be all things Bethesda. If if uh, if things play out the way, I mean, you have the potential, like very legitimate potential, that we're going to see Fallout Four. We're going to see the next Elder Scrolls. Hopefully, Dishonored Two. I mean, these are gigantic games, yeah. and um, I think they even have a few other things up their sleeves that they're they're going to be talking about. Well- Presumably, they um, don't know. need a whole press conference to announce Fallout Four. So, yeah, I, I, right. I, yeah. I think that you're right. I think that if they're gonna, the fact that you know they're doing their own press event, for, I don't know if it's the first time or if they're just doing it. Did they did they ever have an E3 press conference like back? No, in the this day? is they've always been so. Like when Fallout Three was announced, it was you know them taking the stage at you know Microsoft press conference yeah. and, and 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 doing that. So this is this is big because they're they are taking ownership of that. They're, they're setting the stage for the spotlight to be on them, which a lot of companies have done in the past. Obviously, we went through a whole you know all the different press conferences, and now they start backing off. And, um, you know, Bethesda's in that league, and they are, you know, they have these great IPs that they're going to really promote. And I think they're going to be talking about a few things that are going to be surprising as well. Um, I just I just get the sense that they're they're really working behind the scenes to, uh, to go to a different level than they've already been at, which has already been a high level. Um, and, and their games are going to be the talk of the show. I am right beside you on this one. I'm very excited about the Bethesda Presser. I'm not so much into the Fallout franchise, although I could have my mind changed. It wouldn't bother me at all. But I, having recently gotten into Skyrim in a big, big way, I'm very anxious to see if they do have any, even if it's just maybe a tease or a hint or something at, uh, at Elder Scrolls VI. I'm very, very interested in that. And, and just kind of curious from the industry perspective to see what Bethesda does at their first E3 press event. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a lot of the fallout for is has been one of those like, yeah, almost bordering on like the like Half-Life 3 type of thing, like where people have just been waiting and waiting and, you know, hoping and wishing to see, you know, thinking, reading into, you know, tweets from, you know, people on on the developers team like, you know, wait a minute, they they said for someone else, you know, that maybe that means <laughs> Fallout 4 is coming tomorrow, right. you know, whatever. Like, they just you know, fucking lose their mind. Um, so it'll definitely be big. I, for whatever reason, I still for, I still feel like Bethesda's games don't quite reach the mark of the absolute top upper echelon games in terms of just their wide appeal. Like, they're very, they're huge fans and they're very um, dedicated fans to fans of their series. But for whatever reason, I just don't feel like they quite get the same... Um, interest from the the mm-hmm. average gamer that that may be like uh you know like your call of duty or your grand theft auto or you know some, yeah. some of those big titles will hit and so i don't know i i don't know i don't know that it'll have maybe quite the impression that i that i i, I don't know if i agree that it'll have quite the impression on the overall show as uh, as maybe you guys might feel but i definitely think it'll be cool and to be really honest with you i'm kind of with brent when i say like i'm you know i'm not a huge fallout fan but if they showed me something that was just truly innovative and amazing and awesome uh you know i'm all all but willing to you know to go for it to, uh, to change my mind yeah what about nintendo tony i, I know that uh, i know that you're you're going to talk about some nintendo yeah, that's stuff more f- yeah nintendo's always been kind of more my my flavor my my speed i just i tend to like sort of um you know their their types of games and here lately you know the the wii u and the 3ds you know the wii u especially has been getting a little bit of a you know uh, a hit a bump because it's had a couple of you know bigger title games come out in the last uh, year or so and i think nintendo is next year we're going to probably see the the nx i don't think we'll you know see and or hear anything other than the possible mention that next year we might be seeing something right. um but this year i think is going to be kind of like the year to sort of make people want to buy a Wii U in the meantime. Um, there, there's a lot of things that we sort of know we're going to see, and there are a few things that we are rumored to see. And things that, that are, we're, we're, I think, definitely going to see is we're going to see more of Zelda. Um, I, you know, kind of like we were talking about uh, with Uncharted, I don't even know that we'll necessarily get a date. I think we might get a window um, as to when it'll, it'll be. I'm hoping that we actually see some live gameplay. You know, Nintendo does the uh, Nintendo Directs, I think, still now for the E3 uh, thing. So, you know, it's not going to be like... It's not going to be a live it, event. It's not going to be a live event, but I do think it'll be a huge one. Like, you know, we've kind of talked before. I actually kind of like how Nintendo does theirs better. Um, they're just a little easier to watch and, and and sometimes a little more entertaining than the, the live events from the other guys. I mean, they work sometimes, but they're also very long, and so they don't work sometimes. Right. Uh, but anyway, um, so so besides Zelda, which I do think we'll see uh, more from, um, there's a couple of the, the bigger rumored things. And I actually think these could be sort of the... The huge things that that might make people want to to pick up a Wii U in the next year. Um, there is rumor that we're going to see uh, uh, the Star Fox game for the Wii U. You know, there was a demo that was played, I think, last year, or maybe it was even the year before, that uh, Miyamoto had put together to kind of show, you know, what what a Star Fox game might look like on the new hardware, using like the the uh, the game pad to kind of use as a controller for the ship, and you actually kind of shot from the uh, the screen on the control pad and stuff. You know, I think we're going to we might possibly see a fully realized Star Fox game. That would be pretty cool be actually. A, that would be very cool. I mean, Star Fox is a, a, one of their franchises that really we've not had um a major release from since I guess the 3DS game that came out and even that was sort of a um a remake, you know, to some degree. So, I don't know, I guess maybe Star Fox Adventures fucking GameCube maybe. I don't know. I I, I will say it's been a while since I played uh, a new Star Fox game, so it seems like it's been quite a while. Um the other news that uh I for me personally would be huge and I think would be really awesome um but I'm not sure how well it might be received is a Super Mario Sunshine sequel. <laughs> I, I got to be honest. I think Super Mario Sunshine is legitimately, seriously, maybe the single most underrated Mario platformer. I've, like I people, know other people feel that way, too. I, I, I've, seen, I've seen, although you were kind of the first person I knew that rang that bell, I've seen other people since that, uh, I, that are also talking about that. I love that game. I mean, I do have problems with the controls to some degree. Like, I, I you know, I mean... 
you get used yeah, to them. Your stupid I mean, you know, lion if, paws if your, can't work the control. Yeah, I get it. If get you it. Have, if you have uh, if you have the you know if, if you kind of play, it, you get used to it. But I mean, if you had your druthers, there are better ways of controlling it. And we really haven't gotten um, you know they haven't updated it and put it on. You know, I, I sort of thought we might see a remake of it, like one of the um, Legend of Zelda HD type remakes uh, of it for the Wii U. And I would have been happy with that, honestly, because mm. um, I I love that game. It's got some great platforming. Um, but I'd be more excited about a sequel. So, again, a potential. Some people have even rumored that that might be for the 3DS, which I would also be happy with, although I, I really would rather see it on the Wii U personally. Um, but then I think this is kind of the, the last rumored thing, and I think easily the one that I think most people would, would get excited about is a rumored uh, Metroid game for the yes. Wii U. Um, yeah. If I, I got to be honest with you, Metroid Prime as a series, I, I, I think. Prime and um, what was the third one? Uh, it's not Echoes. Um, is it? Uh, is I'm it sorry, other M? No, that was a, like a side oh, okay. side game. But anyway, um, the first and third game in the series were were excellent. The second was okay too. But it's just that as a series might be kind of might almost be my favorite version of Metroid. As much as a two D Metroid fan as I am. I, I think Metroid Prime really nailed it. It did such a good job for creating environment, making you feel like you were really in it. Uh, yeah. I love those games. And to see something in that vein, you know, which I'm assuming it would be like a 3D realized one. I mean, it could be I'm 2D. It could be awesome. Oh, dude. I mean, I, it just to me, it seems like it could be truly amazing. Like, again, one of those games that people see and, and make you want to buy the system. And Nintendo is yeah. slowly... But surely, adding all of those titles that people want on a Nintendo system. I mean, that's what's so crazy is you have to wait years to get, yeah. uh, you know, to get your Mario Kart, to get your, um, uh, your your Super Smash Brothers, and then hopefully to get your Metroid yeah, games, the, your Zelda Metroid. games, and things. You know, so it's um, it to me that this is a year that they really could. That, let's be honest, this is the year that will dictate how the Wii U is remembered. If they can make a really big impact here, I think they actually could maybe turn people around a little bit on the Wii U uh, yes. in the end, you know, because because there will actually will be um, it'll, it'll really be worth having. And who knows, maybe we might even get like a you know price drop or something that would really help it out. But uh, I don't hey. think anything like that would be announced E3. Hey, real fast, just to your point about those big IPs in those games, I think it's important to note, and I'm sure some audience members are itching here. I totally agree with you on the Zelda front, but it is important to note that they've publicly said that they're not showing showing it at E3, um, that the game is going to be delayed until next year, and that they decided to not show it at E3. What they what they mean by not show it? I mean, this is coming via an official tweet from the Nintendo of America. I I think maybe not demo it. They're, to me, there's just no way. I think we'll see it in there because you know, like on the on the floor versus what we'll see in the Nintendo Direct. I think we'll right. probably see at least something in the Nintendo Direct about yes, it. Yes, I mean, that's, okay. that's what I'm saying, and yeah. I, I think I agree with you. I think they will definitely they, – they have to. they got to show more gameplay. There's got to be more to show from last year, you know? So yeah. they got to show something. Now, if, if they, they, if they it did, playable, that actually would worry me a lot. You know, I, I would yeah. that would actually kind of make me wonder, like, why are you not showing it? Like – is it not close to being done, or did you not? Well, are you afraid you can't show it well, and it's not going to show off well compared to all the other I'll, games? Of the I'll just say this: as 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 a as a you know fan focused type of thing, if if they've gone through and completely decided to change the game in terms of the art style and some other stuff, maybe they kept a lot of the mechanics, but they decided to do that. That's fine. They need to address where this game is at because to ignore it is the worst thing they could do to just not do anything about it and to not use that grand stage and all the hype to get, you know, some sort you know, get people talking yeah. about it. If you change things, whatever, but just to ignore it and just say, Hey, it's not going to be here and it'll be out next year. That that's going to be really difficult on them I from mean, a standpoint of, of, you know, trying to regain this momentum you're talking about, because I agree with you, this will dictate this E3 will dictate what ultimately happens for the Wii U in terms of its console uh, memory and, and its impact. You know what yeah. I mean? You see how much how much uh, hell Project Red caught for the what I perceive as a very small difference in like what their initial renders of the game, like their first footage of the game and what it ended up coming out looking like. You know, because there was a, a slight difference in overall quality. It was not 
quite did not look quite as good as some of the early footage that they, you know, or, or some of the earlier footage they had shown. And there's a lot of people that are upset about that. And that was a very small difference. So I totally agree. If they if they've done something fairly drastic to it, they need to kind of get people warmed up to that now yeah. rather than, you know, hey, it's coming out next week. And oh, by the way, <laughs> You yeah. know, looks completely different. Or just different. give a status update for God's yeah. sakes, you know. And I, I, mean, I think ball. we have to. I mean, anybody that, that says that we're not going to do that is, I mean, they they may be right, but if they are right, then that I mean that worries me about the game. So, yep. Uh, let's let's run down a couple of other things real fast. Uh, okay. Rise of the Tomb Raider. This is one on my list. Uh, of course, I think we all anticipate this is going to probably be featured pretty heavily at Microsoft's uh, press conference. So, yes. You don't think it'll be at Sony? You know, there's something. There's something <laughs> that tells me it won't be. Uh, I'm still actually trying to kind of wrap my head around the whole uh, the whole console exclusive status of uh, of this game. Uh, I hope Microsoft gets their money's worth for it. I, I imagine that I'll probably be playing it on PC. I'm pretty excited about it. I really loved. I really loved Tomb Raider. I thought it was a, a really fantastic game that had a few things about it that that could have been better i'm really interested to see if they have in fact refined the game uh moving into uh moving into the sequel maybe address some of the issues with it and and just kind of curious to see where they carry things as far as the story and so forth so i'm i'm very very excited about uh, about checking this one out and getting some more getting getting another peek at it yes me too yeah. I, as totally you guys good. know i i had a uh you know I had an issue. You have a with tumultuous level. relationship with that first game, with the, or the reboot. I really enjoyed the reboot. I just thought it was way too violent, um, and and because it just infringed on what Tomb Raider was and tried to be something. It's like if I wanted to play Gears of War, I'd play Gears of War, like make Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider. But anyway, I ultimately really enjoyed the game. I I hope, as I've said since that game, that this next one focuses more on exploration and adventure. Which those elements were in the last game, but I just like to see more of that and less of the really gritty, bloody up, you know, stuff. Uh, or just make it so that I could choose not to do that um, because I feel like that's more fitting for the character. But anyway, the game was great. I mean, I really enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to seeing what 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 they cook up here. And um, what will be interesting is we will detect the tone. You know, we've only seen a teaser, you know, so far. We'll de- I, th- I think we'll see gameplay for sure. Uh, we'll we'll detect the tone right, right. away, you know, uh, yeah. and and that tone for me is important uh, in terms of my interest level. Um, real quick, another one I don't have a lot to say about is Star Wars Battlefront. You know, uh, awesome. there, there's some yeah, the, you know, there's potentially there's some controversy <laughs> over this game and you know, like the direction they're going in. You know, like where like the Battlefront series kind of used to be versus where it is now in terms of feature set. You know, some people are really not happy about the fact that all the air stuff's going to be planetary based not going to you know allow for like space dogfights and so forth but regardless i am very very interested to see gameplay from this i think that the the the, the render trailer they gave us was exciting as it was meant to be but i'm kind of trying to reserve my excitement for actually seeing what the game is going to play like and feel like so that's another one on my list that i'm 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 pretty I'm pretty keen to see more of that at E3. Which I do think we will, right? Don't doesn't everybody yeah, feel yeah. we're uh, going to see yes. gameplay? Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's, it's I, a given. We will see gameplay. I I will say I was I was actually mildly let down by the the first sort of gameplay, you know, yeah, in game engine footage that we saw, and not even just one. like yeah, not even just like visually, like it just it did look good, but not just unbelievably good. But also just I don't know, it was it was somehow just not as exciting it just it didn't quite get across to me like what uh, you know uh, 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 the excitement level i had for it once it was first announced so uh, in a way maybe who knows that actually could be a smart move it could be sort of too because i think people's people's excitement level for it was kind of continually growing since the very first announcement when we didn't, you know, didn't see anything from it. We just saw that little, you know, stomping down on the, you know, the, the snow speeder. And, um, you know, so people are getting side side in a way, this almost sort of, I think brings it back down a little so that maybe they can blow us away at E3 because, you know, if they, if they came out with footage that was just so, so at E3, that would have probably been a bigger letdown than seeing this little teaser kind of bringing our expectations back in line a little, little bit and then you know 
showing us gameplay footage like all right okay cool i'm in i'm signed up you know it, it looks cool so yeah. I'm, I'm crossing my fingers for that yeah i hope it's good just keep everyone keep in mind there's going to be multiple star wars battlefronts so you this know true. And, so you know it, it, it's one of those like tough shit type of things like yeah we're not giving you space f- you know dog fights because we're saying yeah. for this what people. is this a so, space opera <laughs> what, what is this star wars star but, um, wars but anyway, I would be remiss too if I didn't mention. Hey, hey, we know that there's going to be a lot of you know virtual reality stuff, Hololens, Morpheus, all that stuff. Eh, um, um, eh. We'll see what happens. Uh, right. That's fine. We know it's going to be there, so we'd be remiss not to mention. And I'd also be remiss not to mention Deus Ex: Mankind Divided, which I oh, think is yeah. you know shaping up to be really good. That series is really coming along well. I'm very excited to see what uh, Idos cooks up uh, up there in Montreal for that. So. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of expectations. Just want to see what they put out. Uh, you know, I think that that it's just a cool game and 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 a cool setting and cool story. And um, I'm interested to see kind of how the mechanics have evolved um, and uh, yeah, and what's there. But definitely on my watch list. Yeah, you and me both. I I, I am a huge fan of the last Deus Ex game, and I'm very very excited to see whatever. They've got uh, they've got in the way of, of an E three presence. I'll I'll take it. I'm I'm very very excited to see where that sequel goes. The only other one that I can think of, uh, and I think both of you probably would agree with me that uh, I would like to actually see some some in game gameplay from is the division. You know we yeah, yeah we, I we, agree. It was one of those that I think really when when the the new console generation was starting that was you know kind of one of those games that people looked to uh, and then in that next E three where they're like all right. That that looks pretty amazing. Like that looks mm-hmm. really good. Um, I mean, now we've had some things out since then that, frankly, ha- have looked about as good. You know, so um, I-, I think it will be really interesting to see. And, I, and one to see if that game has changed much because you know I think I I don't know. It seems like because uh, that's Ubisoft, correct? I'm not crazy. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah Ubisoft. So Ubisoft does seem to be either guilty of or unafraid to, however you want to look at it of being willing to change their games pretty drastically if they don't feel like they're going to get the end result they want. Um, you know, there's, there's even talk that we might see uh, rainbow six, um, the new rainbow Siege. six, you Siege. know? Siege. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, which is, you know, essentially we, we, I, you know, we, we were hoping yeah, everybody I think was hoping to get the Patriots or, or at least see what that Patriots concept was that, that teaser we saw you know, years ago. Um, and they've kind of, drop that and, and and have done something completely new be interesting to see you know what what that what gameplay is going to look like from that um and the division i think is the same way like it'll kind of be interesting to see if it is is just like what we saw before and more of it or if they've tweaked it changed it whatever i don't know I'll, i I will be excited to see some gameplay from it the the division yeah. is definitely one that i would i would like to see because frankly i think it would help kind of restore my restore my faith in the game uh, because I have to say that my my confidence level has been shaken as of late just by some of the some Not of the start. information and the rumors and things coming out. You know, yeah. the, the idea that that uh, it seems like the farther we get along, it seems like the less of a game they had to start with, and yeah. more of just Tech more of just a video. Had. Yeah, they put together a video. They had a feature set that they wanted to include in the game and then they started making it that's kind of how it feels to me right now which is very similar to patriots honestly yeah, like yeah, i think they they made true. a cool trailer they made something that people said oh that looks cool and like holy shit people like that okay we should we should try to make that how, how are we gonna do it you know <laughs> right so i'd like to see something from the division because i think that it would uh, it, it would it would help me kind of get excited about it again as opposed to feeling pretty trepidatious which is where i am now um all no, right so doesn't add up, is what you're saying yeah <laughs> thank you uh, the let's see the, the next thing for me I'll, I'll just mention these two in passing because there's not really a lot to say about them right now I'm excited about this PC press conference that's going to be going down at E3 this this focus on PC games it's going to have uh, well Cliff Blazinski is going to make an appearance Dean Hall is going to be there so, you know a bunch of, of course he is <laughs> of course so anyway I'm excited about that though I you know I've, I've become a, a very avid PC gamer probably spend most of my gaming time on the PC these days. And uh, I'm I'm down for that. I'm excited to see what they show off and what you know, just what that conference looks like or that 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 uh, that event looks like. What uh, what is the focus? What kinds of uh, what kinds of things are they kind of zeroing in on to to you know just to get the PC crowd excited? 
The other thing is my pie in the sky wish, and I, I know that you know there there are various rumors and things like that that are pointing to it being a possibility that we're going to see some sort of announcement at E3 surrounding Red Dead Redemption, uh, whether that Hello. is the sequel or whether yes. that you know is you know maybe like an like a, a HD current, remake or something, yeah, like an HD remake for current gen hardware, maybe a PC version, which is really what I'd like to have, but. If there's anything that Rockstar has to say about Red Dead Redemption at E3, well, I am going to be there to hear it. I got some good news for you, Brent. I got the inside track on this one, and uh, I'll go ahead and tell oh, you God. now. You can look, you can look for that very trailer to, to to appear right after the release date announcement trailer for The Last Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Okay, guys, welcome back. We're on the road, uh, but we're not going to be here that long because uh, it's been a lengthy show already, and frankly, I don't have all that much to talk about. I played a little Project <laughs> Cars. I played a little Witcher 3, but I don't have any major updates uh, or developments on either of those games, so I'll say that I've played them, and then uh, and we'll go ahead and move on to Into the Sunset and talk about some other stuff. Uh, DK, why don't, you, uh, why don't you take the first slot here? What do you got? What do you want to talk about? Sure. So obviously we were talking about Batman Arkham Knight before, and I'd like to mention that the uh, latest issue of Retro uh, should be available by the time this comes out. If not, it's very, very imminent. Uh, you can head over to shopreadretro.com to check that out um, and download the digital version or order a print if you're not already subscribing to Retro. And one other little plug I want to mention, this is in beta, but it's actually pretty damn sweet. Obviously, we just spent uh, about 30, maybe longer, 30 minutes or so, talking about our most anticipated games of E3. And I'm proud to say that uh, I've helped create something off of uh, um, th- that's brand new called MostAnticipatedGames.com. And you could actually go there and rank your most anticipated games, see what the most anticipated games in the world are at any given moment, and contribute to that global conversation. Uh, and if you run a blog or a small site or, or whatever and want to have your audience participate in it, you could do that as well. A uh, really cool little thing building up over there and uh, getting a lot of activity. So check out mostanticipatedgames.com and contribute to that. Uh, I think it would be something really fun for everybody to do, and uh, that's why I built it. Awesome. I will uh, go ahead and say that uh, my end of the sunset moment this week uh, concerns the the new Star Wars arcade game, Star Wars Battle Pod. And uh, Kotaku had a, uh, they had a, a cool article talking about this. Uh, it's it's a monster of an arcade game, and I really want to play it. I actually, if you you can go to their website and you can find locations that have a lot of Dave and Buster's uh, here in North America. The closest, I think, the closest place to to us is about four hours away. So if uh, if I actually want to get my hands on this, uh, it's going to require it's going to require a day trip somewhere to do, but. Uh, it is it is badass, and and the thing is, if you want to have this in your home, they'll they'll sell it to you. Um, Bandai Namco, they got no problem as long as you're willing to drop thirty five thousand dollars, and that's for the low end model. If you want, like, I was gonna the, say, if I you want the, the low end, yeah, yeah, if you want the leather seats goodness. and everything, one hundred thousand dollars. But that's it. But that's it. Uh, that's the premium edition. So anyway, Star Wars Battle Pod looks fucking awesome i really really want to play it and hopefully I, you know i've got a i got a summer vacation coming up i'm going to be i'm going to be uh, in the orlando area uh briefly so i might perhaps get a chance to go play it there and drop a few dollars on it we'll see very cool uh tony yes sir what do you got? All right. So what I've got for you this week is, uh, you know, I used to every so often I would talk about YouTube channels that uh, that I really enjoy, things that I kind of tend to watch. And yeah. uh, if it's something you haven't checked out, I, I think you would do yourself a favor and, and check it out. And one of the shows I, th- I have talked about before is Game Sack on uh on youtube yeah and the guys over there um are are they're really interesting they're really funny the thing i like about them is they're not those uber serious you know like just you you know 
you're just absolutely wrong in your opinion type of guys about games. They they review games they like. like they, they talk. <laughs> <laughs> they talk about games they like. I'm not like they, that, and fuck you. Yeah, and they they kind of criticize one another's choices and whatnot. But I mean, in a fun way, and it's 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 a good it's a fun show. Anyway, the reason that I think you should check it out is uh, this past week's episode. They did one that I found so painfully frustrating to watch because it's something that angers me. And basically, the show they did this past week was on games, digital games that um, should get a physical release. And so it's basically talking about all these games that are only released digitally these days, but there should be a way to get them physically. And the reason you should be able to get them physically is well sort of pointed out a few minutes in when they start talking about some of the most fun games that I have played that you cannot get anymore, even digitally. So, like, for instance, like, um, they didn't talk about it in the show, but, like, OutRun, uh, the, the remake of OutRun on the Xbox 360, uh, one of the best versions of that game. I still own uh, the disc version on, on the PSP and whatnot. Um, you can no longer buy it. The rights expired or whatever, and so Sega no longer sells it on the store. So if you didn't already buy it, you'll never be able to buy it again, apparently. Wow. Um, they also had an, an, an Afterburner game that was uh, a similar uh, fate. They had uh, the, D- the Daytona uh, arcade game that they remade, 1080p widescreen support, but it, was, but it was the arcade game. It wasn't enhanced or anything except to just fill the screen. No, no longer ever will be able to be, to be bought again. Um, and it just it was so painful to watch this and it, it to me is such a great thing that you should think about if you if you really love games you, we really should start pushing these companies to release more of these digital games on physical copies so that we can show them to our kids one day so that we can play them again ourselves one day because there are games out there uh, like I think Shovel Knight was one of the, the examples they use I don't believe Shovel Knight has ever been released physically on any platform, and it's been released on a lot of platforms. Yeah, uh, I may be wrong, and if I am, I apologize. But I mean, I, I think that there I don't. Are, I don't think it has. I don't think it has. And, and there I mean, are a I was lot saying of games I don't that apologize. are like that. Fuck yes. that. <laughs> but I think there are a lot of games like that. And I really wish. And, and I know this is uh, a lot of people out there. I know the retro console uh, Daniel uh, knows a lot about is is one of those things that's focusing on physical copies of games. It's a very important, yeah. a very important thing that I think we just sort of take for granted. We're just like, ah, it's just the way things are these days. There's just really no reason that it has to be that way. You know, Correct. I think if we made it uh, voiced our opinion that we could. Uh, that we would like these games physically, even if we had to pay a premium to get them physical. You know, if there was smaller yeah. print runs and things like that, I, I, I still would love to have that option. And uh, for the very reason that there's a couple of games that I did not buy on like my account. I played them at someone else's house or whatever, uh, and I'll never be able to get them again. You know, yep. uh, the PT demo that's been taken down is is kind of one of those examples of mm-hmm. like it's, it was a digital only thing that now. Even if you did download it before, if it's not still installed, you'll never be able to play it again. Apparently, so. Don't. Anyway, that's that's my battle cry, and, uh, and, and 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 it's not a battle cry because this isn't battle cry. No, because that shit is copyrighted. It is copyrighted. Uh, I'm, I'm going to sue myself. That's <laughs> let me <laughs> let me know how that works out. That might actually feel yeah. kind of good. I and you know. know what? I'll win. Yeah, I'll you will lose as well. But you know, but you always win. <laughs> Yes. We talked about this very thing uh, a few weeks ago on the show, and I never know, listened to your show. I uh, well, and who can blame you? But I think that uh, I, I think that you're right. I mean, you, we, we were talking about the <laughs> we were talking about the importance of game preservation and how uh, the industry really needs to the industry really needs to adopt some sort of standard or or practice, some kind of policy. To, to see this happen because it, you know the gaming history is disappearing right in front of us in some cases and uh, you know we, we shouldn't we shouldn't let the game industry you know get decades down the road like the film industry did and suddenly discover oh wow there's all these there's all these uh, pieces of art that have been lost to history that yeah. nobody bothered to preserve you know we should really get out in front of this and do something now so I, I, I second your you. non battle cry. Battle, Battle cry. cry. All right, guys. Uh, that is going to wrap it up for this week's show. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Daniel. It was fantastic rolling with you guys again. It was so fun. Likewise, man. <laughs> now we are going to turn it over to the outlaw audience and let you guys sound off. 
as we always ask you to do, if you got anything to say about games that need a physical release, uh, as the, the video on the GameSack YouTube channel purports, uh, the Arkham issue of Retro Magazine, which is going to be out imminently, the Star Wars arcade game Battle Pod. Of course, our E3 most anticipated list. We want you guys to sound off on that. Share your most anticipated games and why. And then anything we talked about in the garage, the Oculus Rift and PC price combo, CD Projekt, not discussing Cyberpunk 2077 for now. Arkham Knight side quest details, and of course the Until Dawn launch trailer. If you want to sound off on any of those, please feel free. We'll look forward to hearing your thoughts, and we'll be back next time with an all new episode of Outlaw Gamer Radio. Until then, remember you don't stop playing because you get old, you get old because you stop playing. See you with next yourself. time. Uh, what? 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 I'm old. Peace. <laughs>